Greetings, adventurers. My name is Kramer, and today we are going to be talking about the viability, the possibility of wearing a back quiver for your bow and arrow with a back scabbard for your sword. And as you can see, I'm clearly doing it, but there's a lot more uh, nuance to this. And specifically, I want to explore how this might work with a shabbard. Now, I don't actually have a shabbard, and the reason for that is because, and if you're not familiar, that is the that is the patented Shadiversity style back scabbard. The reason why I haven't made one for myself is because um, if I choose to wear a sword on my back, which is actually not super often, uh, I do it with this sword specifically. And that is because uh, of its very short blade, but it still has the two-handed hilt. I have a whole video on why I designed this sword the way I did. And I also have a video on the back quiver that I'm using, which I made, why I made it the way I did, and some of the benefits. Suffice it to say, uh, it's very compact, it's modular, it's very easy to um, modify based on what it is that you would like it to do and it won't let your arrows fall out pretty much no matter what you're doing so those will be linked in the cards and in the description so one thing we need to keep in mind when we're talking about wearing both a back scabbard and a back quiver at the same time it's not necessarily optimal for uh like long form adventuring and the reason for that is it takes up a lot of space on your body it takes up a lot of real estate mainly on your back and over your shoulders where it's going to start getting difficult to carry other forms of gear, whether that, that is a backpack, whether or not that is uh, some sort of satchel, whether or not it is just a bedroll with stuff in it and a tump line, that all has to go somewhere. Uh, and if you're using the real estate of your back and your shoulders to carry your weapons, you are losing that real estate when it comes to carrying those other things. And you might be thinking, well, you could just like put on a backpack underneath all that. Yeah, you could, but then if you get into combat, uh, you're pretty much locked in. You, you either have to take all of this off first in order to take the backpack off, and then that sort of defeats the whole purpose of wearing the setup to begin with. Um, and if you put the satchel or the backpack on over top, that specifically gets in the way of the shabbard, uh, especially with a backpack, because if the backpack is on top, that doesn't leave room for uh, the sword to actually come out. If you're not familiar with the purpose of a shabbard, um, it is a scabbard that has a slit along the top edge so that if you have a sword that's longer than this one and you can't get it out of the scabbard entirely, it instead slides out that back slit at the top of the scabbard, but if you're wearing something on top of it and it blocks that that gap, then it, then it doesn't serve its purpose anymore. So it has to be the thing that is worn on the outermost layer. I actually want to amend this statement because it's not entirely true. You can wear a shabbard with a backpack. Shad has actually demonstrated this. It just means that you have to wear the shabbard attached to the backpack in a slightly different way, which would also mean you have to wear the quiver a different way if you wanted to wear it on the back as well. So for the scope of this video specifically, it's not super relevant even though you can because the setup would have have to change entirely, and being that I don't have a shabbard, I can't actually demonstrate it. And in the case of a satchel, um, it's just a lot of straps that are going across your shoulders. I think that there might be a better way to go about that. The other thing that uh, we need to consider uh, with this particular setup is what I've discovered just from a few minutes of experimentation is that it's very easy while you're drawing this sword uh, from your back, uh, especially in the position that I'm in right now, to accidentally hit your fletching or damage your bow. Uh, at the moment, I'm using a LARP sword, so that's not really an issue. I'm not gonna cut or nick anything, but with a real sharp blade, uh, you could absolutely damage the rest of your equipment if the sword is being worn underneath the quiver like mine is here. Now I'm choosing for this first part of the experiment to wear uh, the sword underneath the quiver, mainly for two reasons. The first one is that it kind of depends on the type of gear that you have. Different back scabbards are gonna put the sword in a different position on your back. It so happens that this one hangs very close to the shoulder. Um, whereas others might have it more slanted, uh, almost close to horizontal across your back, whereas mine is very, very vertical. Whereas my quiver is hung pretty much top of the shoulder, very close to the inside of the armpit here. So the angles just don't line up properly to have the sword be on top. The other reason is it just doesn't make as much sense to me from like a packing perspective to try to carry uh, something which is heavier, which would be your sword, because it's, you know, three pounds of steel or whatever, on top of something which is lighter, which is your arrows with their delicate fletching and your bow with a string that you don't want damaged or anything like that. It makes more sense to me to carry the bow on top. So I guess we should try that with a real sword so I know whether or not that's true. Okay, so I have my actual real sword on, and again, I don't actually have a shabbard to use with this, mostly because I don't generally tend to wear my swords on my back as much. 
um, unless I'm doing it for the very specific reason of trying to be like, not cosplay, but trying to reenact being a witcher. That's pretty much the only reason I would do it. There are lots of reasons why you might wear a sword on your back. Chad has plenty of videos on that, but I just generally tend to wear them on my waist. But here I have the heavier real sword um, on top of the quiver, which is here in the back. And it's not terrible. It feels stable. It doesn't feel like the sword uh, is, is pressuring the quiver too much. In fact, I can feel that there's even a little bit of a gap here, uh, at least with this particular setup. And this is all going to depend on the actual gear that you have. Um, so test it out if you, if you really want to know whether or not it works for you. But it's not running into the problem that I thought it would. So in this case, yeah, if I had a shabbard, so I was able to actually reach back and, and draw this sword out, you see the blade is too long. So I would need a shabbard in order to do that with this sword. Uh, but nothing would be getting in the way of this scabbard with it being worn on top and it does physically work without getting in the way too much. One of the main reasons I don't like really wearing a, a back scabbard is because of how it tends to stick out here on the side. It makes walking through doorways or through the woods rather difficult compared to wearing it on your hip. So that brings us to sort of the quintessential context problem. Um, why would you do this? Why would you want to wear a sword on your back and a quiver on your back at the same time. I mean, aside from the fact that maybe aesthetically you think that it looks cool, is there a practical reason for this? So this is a very similar sort of setup to what Aragorn uses, at least in the Lord of the Rings movies, where he has a long sword at his side and he has his quiver on his back. I'm obviously missing like the bedroll and the cloak and all that, but this is just for the demonstration of this. Um, what is the reason, what purpose, what problem does having the sword on your back instead solve? Well, it is hypothetically that the hilt of your sword might get in the way of you drawing your bow. And I have had this happen to me in the past while I've been doing my own archery. Those are, those are much older videos, but they are still, they're still live. Um, but this is a new bow and it's a much shorter bow. So I'm curious to see, because the length of this bow and the draw length of this bow is so much shorter than the bow I was using before, if having the hilt here like this is still going to be in the way. You can see it, it, it protrudes past my, past my body quite a bit here, and that is right in the box where you sort of want your bow to be when you're doing traditional archery. But with a smaller bow like this, there's not really a fixed anchor point, and I can kind of shoot from anywhere. So maybe I can, maneuver around this. So if, right, we were shooting in this direction, can I sort of maneuver around here? So I am worried about it sort of getting caught like that. But at the right angle, it's not too bad. And keep in mind that you would already sort of have to work around things, especially when using a shorter bow like this, because the, the main advantage of a bow like this is that it can be used from cover and that it can be used on horseback, where you, of course, have to maneuver the bow on either side of your horse. Otherwise, you're gonna hit it in the back of the head. Um, so this is you know, somewhat similar. It's just a little bit of muscle memory to sort of learn how to avoid that. And it doesn't actually get in the way of of the bow itself. It's like nowhere near the string. It's nowhere near the actual string and it's nowhere near where the actual body of the bow is or will be uh, when I eventually fire the arrow. So that actually doesn't get in the way too much. This is again dependent on your gear because you may have a different style of scabbard than I do. This one hangs very close to horizontal so it's very much protruding in either direction in the way. If you have a scabbard that hangs more vertical it's not an issue at all. And there's, there's not really a reason to wear the sword on your back because the main problem would be it being in the way. If the scabbard is vertical, then it's not in the way. So just wear it like that. So if you were using like a bigger bow, a war bow, I guess this would really be a shad thing because I don't actually have a big war bow that I, can, that I can demonstrate with this. And it should also be pointed out that the style which we see depicted in so much iconography when it comes to shooting a war bow, which is to lean forward, not only has the positive benefit of allowing you to engage most of your back muscles, um, really all of your muscles so that you can actually shoot that 120 pound bow, but it also gets your hips very much out of the way of that box where your bow is going to be maneuvering in while you're shooting it. And personally, I like this way better. It is more comfortable. 
it is for me. It distributes the weight better. I feel more comfortable walking around like this. It feels more natural to me and I don't feel as restricted in my in my upper body movements and it's I have a slimmer profile walking forwards. Yes, the sword does sort of protrude this way, but that's only a problem if I'm trying to walk sideways, which I'm not really going to do, so it's not an issue. This is the direction that I'm going. Uh, so it makes more sense to have everything streamlined this way. That's why I like this better. And it also means that you have more uh, economy of space in your back because all you're having to worry about is the quiver and the bow and marrying that with your backpack or your tump line and your bedroll or your satchel or whatever. It's just a lot easier because it's less things. Having your kit is such a personalized thing and how you choose to wear it and how it works for you is such a personalized thing. The videos like this can be a little bit difficult because what I say works or doesn't work for me could entirely be opposite for you. But I can think of some scenarios where you really wouldn't want to have all of your weapons located on the same place on your body. Uh, we're having some diversity in, in, in where things are located and where they deploy from uh, is a lot better. And, you know, just off the top of my head, if you get pinned up against a wall or you fall on your back or something, now all of a sudden you can't access any of your major weapons. Whereas even if you're back here, at least you can still uh, draw the sword this way. The pommel then goes into the opponent's chest or whatever. Like, at least you have those other options. Whereas, you know, if something happens to your back, where you just take that piece off, like this way, this much more modular way. One, it's easier to take my sword off and leave my bow or take the bow off and leave my sword than it would be if they were either stacked right on top of each other or attached to each other. Like if the quiver was physically attached to the scabbard, you, you either have to wear the whole thing or you have to take the whole thing off and then you don't have anything at all. Um, this way, it's just a lot more like if I want to move the quiver over here, I can. If I want to carry it on this side, I can. If I don't want to carry it at all, I can. And I still have the sword available to me. Modularity for me is much more important uh, than to me what almost at this point feels a little gimmicky. Don't take offense to that if you like doing that or you want to do that. Like it's not an inherently negative thing. Wearing the back scabbard with the back quiver, it's such a specific way to wear those two pieces of equipment. And the only real reason I can think of to do that, aside from if it gets in the way of your bow and you still want to have a long sword rather than just a sword with a shorter hilt or something, and there are some situations where, you know, that might be necessary for your character, or for the story, or if you just really want it, that might be a way to mitigate the problems of the hilt getting in the way, wearing everything on your back. Um, the other thing is, if it's more comfortable for you to actually carry, or your character to carry while you're out on adventures, if it's more comfortable to have everything carried on your back, than on your waist, then it would be good for traveling if you're not planning on getting into combat, right? Like I can physically wear this scabbard, even though it's not meant to be worn on my back, I can sling it over my shoulder if my hips are getting tired or something like that and it's easier for me. But then it's a choice. I'm not like locked in based on the style of scabbard that it is. I mean, when it comes to weight distribution too, if for some reason, like if you somehow figured out how to wear a backpack too, and you had your bedroll and everything like, and all of it was strapped on your back in addition to your back quiver, in addition to your sword, you are now wearing all of your equipment on your back, which on the one hand might sound fine to you, uh, but on the other, then you're, you're weighted very heavily backwards uh, whereas it might be better to redistribute some of that weight to your chest or to your belt, to around your waist, like having the sword here instead. It, for me, that makes things a lot more comfortable. It might make things more comfortable for you too, rather than having everything back here, which ergonomically is also a very difficult place to sort of reach to. I choose to wear the quiver on my back when I'm traveling, like when I'm hiking or something, because it's easier, because it's more comfortable and it's less in the way. It doesn't like dangle around and like bounce up against my leg or get caught in between my legs and trip me or something. It's easier to wear it back here while I'm traveling. If I knew in advance that I was going to be getting into combat, I would switch it around so that it was on my waist too, because then the for me, the arrows are easier to draw, they're easier to access. I'd have to take everything out in order to unstring the bow anyway, so I would, I would redo the kit essentially so that the, that the quiver would be back here. It's just not as practical to travel with it this way. In the worst case scenario, if it is on my back like this and I have enough warning that I can actually deploy my bow, but not enough time that I can just sort of slip it down like this and wear it across my waist, um, I can do that. I can draw the arrows from the back, but Deploying weapons from behind you is just never going to be as good, in my opinion, as deploying weapons that are in front of you. That, that to me, that just makes sense. Physically, it, 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 it's more comfortable. So if you did want to use a quiver 
like this in conjunction with a back scabbard, specifically the shabbard. Um, I've already demonstrated that you could do it just by putting on the quiver first and then strapping the sword up on top. Um, my sword scabbard has a fairly thin profile. The shabbard, the profile is on the top. It's much wider, but that, that extra shield bit to help guide the sword in is on the top of the weapon. So I don't see that getting in the way with the quiver. It would be interesting, uh, Shad, if you'd like to test that out and see how it works, whether you think it's viable, whether or not you think people should do it, whether or not you think people would do it, that would be a great video to watch. But I can also think of another scenario where the quiver and the scabbard are actually integrated in order to make sure that nothing is getting in the way of the deployment of the sword. And that is to have the quiver actually attached to the front of the scabbard, right? Like if I were facing behind me and my head was here and my back was here and it was worn on me like this, to have this actually attached and conjoined here so that there's no strap on the other side that's getting in the way of the sword being drawn and then the whole thing is strapped around the shoulder, that might work too. It's kind of heavy though. The problem with it being heavy is not necessarily that it's difficult to carry. Carrying it is fine. Uh, the problem is that the straps start to slip. The straps start to slide around and that's when things can get tricky. Also, what I mean by gimmicky is that for me, when it comes to like adventuring, if we were gonna consider adventuring like D&D, like Lord of the Rings, as if it were like a like a real thing, life and death, like by the, by the blade of your sword, you will live or die tomorrow. Um, the less that can go wrong, the better. The less sort of tricks there are to your kit that all have to like function seamlessly together in cohesion and in order to make sure that um, you don't like accidentally cut your own strap or unfletch your own arrows or break your own bow or something, um, the less that can go wrong, the better. And when we're talking about integrating a back scabbard with a back quiver and how to make all that function and you have to have a strap here very specifically and, and this is the only way it will work, that, that, that's a lot of extra stuff that isn't necessary when just wearing it on your waist does work fine. Um, so so that I, I guess that's also what I mean by gimmicky. If it's a trick, that means that there's a lot of steps that have to be done in order to make it work. You have to make the shabbard, and you have to figure out how to integrate it with the quiver, then you have to figure out how it all fits together on you, then which one do you put on first or take off first or deploy, and the, the backpack, where does that go? It's just a lot of unnecessary steps to fix a problem that doesn't exist. This is fine. Especially with the bow this short, this really doesn't get in the way. So once again, Lord of the Rings always gets a pass. Aragorn is right, short bow, long sword, it works fine. So the weather over here uh, is, is only nice right now. It's probably gonna start to rain again very soon. It's been just abysmal here lately. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna head in before my luck turns. I will see you very soon. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.